Mouse just ran past my feet and I stomped it. Jeez. Uh, it's actually a fool. Alright, we have some Oris 8 berries that I want to pick and snack on. Actually, I'm foraging. And Oris 8 is a cross, like a Josta berry, between a black currant and a gooseberry. But they're both different in that one is crossed differently male to female. And the Oris 8, if they I've got another plant, the main mother plant, and its berries are getting a little more tart and less sweet, but what's changed is it's growing in a lot more shade than it used to. Where this one's getting more sun, and these berries are like those berries in the past. They're pretty sweet. It's a way to get the benefit of the black currants without getting all puckered up. I gotta go to the other side of the fence to get those. This Russian Seaberry is actually going to have a couple of berries. First year. Got to plant the seeds. I'm going to be taking a lot of these for grafting up north. You see the leaves are shot because the Japanese beetles have found them to be a delicacy. Now I got some Japanese beetle traps around and it's reducing the load. Aha! Uh -huh. Japanese beetles have found the Achira as a food source. Well, that definitely proves this stuff is edible. <laughs> Amazing growth here on the west side of what I have termed my composting area. I do make compost here in the spring and then I convert it into a growing area. This wall comprises of two garden beds. You can see one of them. The other one you can't even see. It's just obscured. Or all the growth. But this is a garden bed right here and out of this garden bed I'm growing, I've already grown onions. You see a lot of them are getting ready to be picked and I'm starting to harvest tomatoes. You can see I've got some right there I can pick right now. Well this cattle panel that you see, those squares of then I'm growing tomatoes and weaving the tomato vines through that, through those openings. And this whole panel is covered in tomatoes. It's probably like, I don't know, eight or ten different plants in here. Along with the tomatoes, on the bed that you can't see, I am growing climbing beans and some of those beans have migrated over here to this fence and they're growing with the tomatoes. I'm just going to let it happen. I'm not going to fight it. See what happens. In the path, so now I'm going to have a harder time walking through here, which isn't that bad because you can just put my foot between the vines and the leaves and whatever, is a squash plant. On that bed that's obscured, you see all those little white flowers. Those are skirt. So I'm going to be harvesting a skirt crop out of there. And you can see the climbing beans that were on the back. They're, they're all the way up the stick fence that I have growing here, or in place here. I think there's like a dozen, something like a dozen climbing bean plants growing in amongst all that. And inside of there, I've already harvested a whole lot of my grandma's onions, spring onions, and there's still some kind of hanging in there. Producing bobils, you can see the stock of one of them right there laying down on the ground. Yeah, I probably forgot something. I think there's a couple pawpaws in there that are being nursed too in that shade. They, they did, they made it through last year in that deep shade. So we'll see. I don't know yet. If we come to the end of this, you're going to see a cheer growing. And there's a tomato in there too somewhere. It's supposed to be a white one, so if it's grown in the shade, it'll stay white. And you can kind of see. Right in there. There, see it? So I don't know, I haven't been in there. I don't even know if there's a tomato growing on it yet. 
Then we zoom out here a little bit, we got sweet corn growing too. More climbing beans up to sweet corn. But this is sweet corn growing in the compost that I made. And it had so much carbon that it's just amazing to me that, that we're growing corn in that compost that I think all that nitrogen should have been locked up in with that carbon. So something's happening here that I don't know about. Same thing happened last year. I grew corn in that compost that I made with all those wood shavings in it. That's interesting. So I don't know what I forgot. We come to this end, and here you can see the hazelnuts that I have growing, hanging over. They're ripening. Oh, I see a squash growing in there. Yeah, we're gonna have lots of those. Those actually turn orange. It's some Japanese squash. Uh, and there's a hazelnut bush in the backdrop behind the beds, and you can see I used disposable socks, and I went over the ones that I really wanted to keep. Those are that's a, a bush that's 100% European. Uh, an acquaintance gave me some nuts. They came from one of the universities out on the West Coast, and they claimed that it's a European variety that they think is uh, immune to the blight. And it's been, you know, pollinated by something else here. I have Americans, I have a precocious, and I have an Italian, which isn't a European too. Jefferson, those were all sending out pollen this year, so who knows what pollinated these nuts, but the mother is that European. And I, I want to plant those seeds, I don't want to eat them. They're nuts, they're nuts. And same thing with the precocious that are in here next to the Europeans. I want to save the nuts out of those that are right next to the Europeans too because they may have been pollinated by the Europeans, by the pure European stock. Well, that's just a little story I want to tell. Here it is, right before my very eyes. August is the month and then it disappears. Still might have a week or so of gooseberry picking that I can do. Yeah. First tomatoes of the year and they come right off. Might as well just eat them right now. I better save one for inside. I'll eat the little one. Give one to the boss. It's cayenne is I think they're both pretty red. Maybe a little bit more. I'll let them go another day. Oh, and then I see a couple more tomatoes. There we go. Yeah, they're pretty soft, I can tell. Here we go. And so it begins. You can see the frost coming out of that barrel because I've got fish carcasses, frozen ones, that I just put over the top of this chopped up comfrey. I'm going to make a hybrid fish hydrolysis wild plant comfrey ferment. And I'm going to let this ferment all the rest of the summer, fall, winter, spring, and then next May middle spring I'm gonna break this open and feed it to a compost heap that I'm building and all that special phosphate in those fish bones and all the proteins in the flesh it will all be added to this ferment so I'm gonna put water over the top of this and then I'm gonna get some more comfrey and I'm gonna pack this barrel full of comfrey over the top of the fish and then I'm gonna spin on the cover and I'm not going to open it again until next May. Now we have rainwater added. Now this barrel was totally full of rainwater from a couple months ago and I peeled it out put it in in this barrel. We're going to find out how much water is left so we get an idea as to how much water it takes to fill one of these barrels full of wild plants and now fish carcasses.
I had these bags catching Japanese beetles, so I emptied them out in my compost. And I have protein from Japanese beetles. So this is my six barrel full. This one has fish in it. It's different than the other five. And I was thinking I pretty much have my next year's fertilizer made. All made. Don't need any more. But I still have two more barrels to fill, so we're going to do her. So I found some walnuts, black walnuts that had dropped off here prematurely. I threw those in there too. Let's see what happens. Okay, we're finished. I got multiple layers of rhubarb leaves. And I'm holding them down with sticks. You can see them going across. They're tucked in under the lip here. So the material can't float to the top. Yeah, it's not a deal breaker, but if there is material on the top, it'll mold. The mold isn't going to kill anything, so I just don't like the mold. I don't want to deal with it. So that's why I take that precaution. And then this is what's left of the water. So that much worth of material is in that barrel. The rest is water. Which is good because uh, you need water early spring for the starting to compost heaps. Okay, that's another one. Twist that cover on, and we can go take a break. Maybe go snack on some berries. This is a bed of captivator gooseberries that I'm nursing, and they're also producing. I was sitting here picking, I thought, well, I might as well take a little video of it. <laughs> I'm right at the end here. This is a captivator gooseberry that I had, I had actually mound layered years ago, and I broke it all apart. There are many plants, and there might be, oh, there's a big one down there, and there might be, I'd say, 10 plants, 8 to 10 plants in here, and I'm just nursing them to get them big, and they're producing. That's a good sign, I'd say. Well, my son said he saw the wood truck in here, and you can tell it's been in here. All the carrot leaves are gone. This is the second year in a row that it's happened. A little disappointing, but it tells me I need to work on how I fence this area in. And I'm going to do it. Look at the woodchuck even ate the leaves on the squash. Hmm. Oh, a bit of good news. The first sun gold right there. Let's get it. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to eat that right now. Huh, there's another one. Mmm, oh, that's good. Tiny Toad, we want more of those. Thanks for visiting. Thanks for staying here. Thanks for living here. Keep eating those slugs. Oh, this is a tomato plant that has died or is dying. It's an early girl, and I see no apparent signs of an injury. Other than right down here, I think a mouse or something ate the skin. Over down the bottom, maybe a maybe a vole or a mole. But we have two of them right next door, and they're still alive. Looking really good, too. So I see the damage from, you know, various pests and predators. And every once in a while I get a twinge where, oh, I don't know if this is working out very well. But actually it's working out very, very well because I'm still getting tremendous crops. Even though the, the, um... Woodchuck came through and ate a lot of the leaves and the kohlrabi. Look at it's a nice kohlrabi for harvesting. We've got a lot of kohlrabi in here. And some of them are ultimately going to survive that. I only need, I don't know, probably five or maybe eight of them in here to make it to the end. And the end means when everything freezes up, that's the final harvest. And those will more than likely be, you know, 10, 10 12 pound kohlrabis. So, never know what's going to happen, but 
can't get disappointed just because something one thing bad happens in the backyard alright I sprayed these nuts with just straight ferment stuff that's a, a year old and it's pretty smelly and so far the squirrel hasn't ate these but the rest of the plant is pretty much they get he took them all because it rained and I thought well I'm just gonna see what happens I'm not gonna spray anything for a couple days and I'll tell you the squirrel was on it just like that that was after I had sprayed it with that hot pepper ferment so sprayed it hot pepper ferment four or five days there was no squirrels it rained actually it rained and I sprayed again and then it rained and I didn't spray and then just like that a whole bunch of nuts were missing off of this one bush and so I uh, sprayed yesterday with the straight ferment which was really smelly and I just sprayed on each of these nuts and they're still here so the question is do I spray again or do I wait and find out but if it's an experiment I should just wait and find out here's a couple of nuts that I didn't see I didn't spray so let's think about this so those over there behind me I sprayed and these I didn't so let's just leave it go like that see what happens not much time has transpired since I harvested the garlic out of these two beds and we're already going again these are those avalanche beets that I like so much and they're going I see I got a ground cherry I'm gonna have to stake up out of here I got a stake here I just gotta tie it actually and these beets are looking marvelous right now hoping for something to happen and over here I've got fall radishes planted and look at we have liftoff so we got more pasta berries this plant is getting near the end though it's been good I've been pretty happy I've got some that are growing in the shade and they're just starting to ripen so my season will continue to be going for Josta berries oops this is better than eating vitamins I saw some way back in here. That one's too hot. All dried up. Then we have Yon Prairie's gooseberries that are ripening now. Yon's Prairie gooseberries. Wow. It's so good. Mm -hmm. Oh, here's some I didn't see. Hanging right over my work desk here. Mm -hmm. more inside I'll save them for lunch later got more to snack on here these are ground cherries I don't harvest these until they fall off the branches now Ooh, and there's one that doesn't have one in it so a mouse must have got it I can set another trap they give you a sign once you have one mouth you know a whole bunch of them are gonna follow 
Oh, I'm gonna open it up so you can see it. There. That's what I'm making all the hullabaloo about. And then don't throw your empty shells back by the plant because you'll keep picking them up. <laughs> How do I know that? Yes. Cow peas are overflowing their hardware cloth bank. And they're totally shading out this kohlrabi. So it's not going to be growing much more. I'm going to go ahead and harvest that one today. Let's just pull it out of ground right now. Right here, right now. We'll just cut it apart on my workbench. Look at it. That's pretty cool. But I wanted to check out these cowpeas with the barley. Get a full length view of the bed here. It's about 10 feet long and 30 inches wide. And it's bloss the cowpeas are blossoming. First time I've ever grown cowpeas here. And the barley is just barely coming over. And it's making some barley. Some of them are peeking out a little more on this side of the bed. Now this is where I planted a lot of cowpeas. And something about the cowpeas that I learned is they sprawl around so much that because I have this harbor cloth here, they're able to climb. Then they get over the top of at least this particular variety of barley. So I either need to get a taller barley or we need to do this more in an open area so the cowpeas can't climb or plant less cowpeas because I really loaded this thing up. <laughs> So here you see more barley. And the idea is, is I want barley. Barley is the number one focus in this particular bed, but the cowpeas have become it. And that's okay. I'm just trying to learn how to grow barley and get a second crop along with the barley that'll benefit the barley. And I like barley because it's has a it's higher on higher towards alkaline on the pH scale and I want to ferment some of the seeds and eat them but this first year I might not do much of the eating because I'm this is the first year with this black barley and I'm gonna try to propagate get more seeds so here's some really nice barley and it's starting to blacken up here already look at that so this is the, the, these barleys are getting a little more sunlight and they're developing a lot better. Here's some that are even just starting. Huh, this one's going to have two. It's got one down below. No, I guess that's part of it because it was still stuck in our Maybe there's and there might be a second one. We might get two heads of barley out of that one. That's pretty wild. We'll have to look for that on other ones. How about this one here? No, those are, that's two. So I take that as being something exciting to think about. I haven't been back here to get the rest of these captivator berries and I can see they're mostly gone. Yeah. There's probably about a dozen left and they're not on here anymore. Could be my son too, he's been out here harvesting stuff too. Ooh, we got some black raspberries back in here. These are really soft. They're really ripe. They normally taste really fermenty when they're that soft. Yeah, they do. That's extreme right there. There's some over there. I can't get that side of the fence. We're going to have to walk over there and get them. This is my beets. I've been eating on these beets for a couple months already. Just thin them out. And then I want to leave some in the end grow to their full potential. And here we got one that's really going. It's really going. Here's another one. Here's another one. Here's another one. 
That worked out very well. I had a lot of breakfasts with beets in them. Excellent. Oh, one ground, ground cherry in this one. Over here, we have some yellow raspberries that I've had in the, in my gardens for decades. I don't have many left, but I got this one. They're not very prolific. They're not very big. They're not entirely, totally sweet. So I'm not really caring for them. Oh, look at I miss these guys. More gooseberries. Holy cow. These are just right. I have to save some for lunch. Here are those black raspberries all pointing to on the other side of the fence. That one is just a monster. Look at that one. Hmm. I was going to get rid of this bush here, but I'm not going to know. It's a really nice plant. And I sure like not having to walk all the way in the back to get a snack. Once in a while. We just have to train these branches to be cordial. These are pristine apples. I picked one the other day because it, uh, I grabbed it and it just fell right off. And none of these ever, none of these other ones are falling off, so there might have been something wrong with that one. I ate it. Okay, we'll wait. It's the first day of August today, I think. Yep. Something like that. me a hot breakfast this morning. <laughs> I don't even know if I can clip that off. It's so such a tight. Wow. I'm going to have to get a knife. Might as well take them both right away. It's got new ones started. There's a point at which they just kind of get really soft and bushy. But you don't get them right away. I learned that the hard way. That is the start of a very hot breakfast. Uh, since we're on the subject of nightshades, let's get a couple of tomatoes too right away. They just come out right on my hand. These are Juliet's. <laughs> 